Hello, welcome back to Rev Endurance Sports. This is a Rev review, and um, this is the second video in my product review of the Perlazumi Pro Air cycling shoes. And um, I did an unboxing video, which I'll put the link in the description below. And uh, now that I've ridden the shoe a couple of times, I am now uh, willing to maybe talk about the shoe. But before we get going, if you've been coming on to the channel and you're liking the content, please subscribe. It really does help the channel and it really in the, in the algorithm for YouTube, it starts to show that, Hey, this, this person is putting out some pretty good content. People are liking, subscribing, and they're getting notifications. Um, because they want to know what this uh, person is reviewing or, you know, there, there's other, other things within my channel like bike maintenance and things like that. So, but anyway, this is about a product review and about a pair of shoes. So I'll give you a second to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, but um, here we go. Okay, so this is the Pearl Azumi, I almost dropped it. And it's not because it's too heavy. But uh, this is the product review of the Pearl Izumi Pro Air shoe. And it is a lace-up shoe because buckles and ratchets and boas are heavier. So they um, did away with that. And, um, shoelaces are really light. But um, I, <laughs> I'm really impressed with this shoe. Not only is the shoe incredibly light, we will get to the scales later, but not only is the shoe incredibly light, but I thought because it didn't have as much fabric, it didn't have as much padding, it didn't have as much um, on the tongue or you know, things like that, or even some of the bells and whistles that some shoes have, like I've got a pair of CDs back there that I'll show you. They have a ankle adjustment here and, you know, a heel adjustment, not ankle. And, um, but, you know, sometimes just a lace-up shoe with the proper um, design doesn't need a lot of support. Now, this shoe is very reminiscent of a shoe that I will show you. It's a Mavic shoe I've had at least 10 to 12 years, probably longer. And uh, what I mean by that is just a lot of the ventilation, uh, the, the panels themselves are um, integrated or the, the ventilation is integrated into the panels. Very, very smooth transition. You, you can barely tell when the where the transition is and then of course the sole of the shoe has a lot of material missing from it but what they've done is just reinforced it by having um, these open areas here and then just reinforcing the uh, carbon fiber sole so what were my first impressions when i first put the shoe on i thought okay so it's a lace-up shoe and i've had several pair of lace-up shoes and I thought well you know I'm going out for 100 miles and I'm going out for a 10,000 foot climbing day by the way the description I'm sorry in the description is my Strava profile so when I test the product I don't just take it for a spin around the block um, I actually do test product and evaluate it and uh, you know this is a N equals one experiment, of course, but I put a lot of miles on my gear. And so that's why I think that my recommendations or at least my product reviews are worthwhile listening to. So I went out for a hundred mile ride and <laughs> actually I had a rear hub, a free hub failure and just shredded my rear hub. And, um, so that might be another video, of course. But um, but anyway, so I got about 86 miles into the ride, 9,000 feet of climbing into the ride. 
and um, and then the ride was over. But the shoe, which is what we're talking about here, my initial impressions when I put the shoe on, I laced it up and I was like, okay, well, you know, I'm going out for a long day, so I don't want to lace it up too tight. And about maybe 50-ish miles in, we did do a stop. And so I adjusted the left shoe. I didn't really touch the right shoe. So the left shoe uh, felt like I needed to, to tighten up the laces a little bit. So that was the lacing up part. But when I first started pedaling, the this toe box, you know, most shoes taper and, and they get pointy. And this toe box, nice round toe box, I mean, my toes just felt like they had so much space. And I think I have a fairly average foot. It's not wide, it's not narrow, uh, but I felt like, this is a standard width shoe, by the way, they, they don't do a wide, but I felt like I had plenty of room for my toes. And so, you know, the, the pinching of the pinky, that kind of thing, not a problem. But the other thing is, I typically have, a, a, in, mo, in a lot of shoes, um, I, I believe I have more like a higher instep, and I have a pretty high arch as well. And so that usually causes a lot of tension on buckles and uh, ratcheting devices. So with the advent of the BOA system many years ago, I finally was comfortable inside of a shoe. And I thought that the laces I would need to, and of course I have other lace up shoes, but I thought, well, I needed to be a little bit looser than normal just because, well, I'm going out for a long day. But as I said, I had to readjust them later in the day. So super comfortable shoe, even though I have a high instep. And um, the, the insole that comes with the shoe, pull this out real quick. You know, it's a fairly standard insole. I typically replace the insole with um, not orthotics, but, you know, just a, a better designed um, insole because I have such a high arch and I, I do like to have that arch support because if you don't know, that arch support allows for your pedaling mechanics to be more precise and it keeps the knee from dropping in and you know all the kinds of pains and aches and pains that you can get from having a knee that flops around, which is another reason why I ride a fixed cleat and another reason why I cannot stand speed play pedals. And most of the people that I do bike fits with that are on speed play pedals, I take them off and all their issues go away. All their knee issues, all their ankle issues, all their lower extremity issues. So, okay, shoe's really light. Shoe is really comfortable. The shoe is very well ventilated. So... I don't have any bad things to say about this shoe. Um, you know, my biggest concerns were that it was not going to provide enough support. I did several sprints on it just for fun, just to see what kind of support I was getting from the shoe. Um, I did another ride today. It was uh, 60 miles with 6,800 feet of climbing. And, um, you know, I did several sprints on it today. Shoe felt very supportive, very stiff. And, uh, you know, without being a salesman here, I couldn't really tell that the shoe was that much lighter. <laughs> you know, uh, you just kind of know the shoe is lighter. And you know that part of your whole equipment setup, your your bike, your shoes, your pedals, your helmet, all that stuff, you've, you've gotten the lightest stuff you can. And so if you were to stand on the scale, um, you know, let's say without your bike, you stand on your scale fully dressed, you obviously are going to be lighter, but I really couldn't tell that the shoe was lighter as I was pedaling. I mean, you're still having to push, you know, three, 400 watts through the pedals. It doesn't matter, in my opinion, really how light the shoe is. But as I mentioned, if it's if it helps you, you know, the, the, 
the mind and, and, and the psyche is way more powerful. I always tell people that the brain is as strong as muscle and you have to train the brain. And what this means is when you go out and train, you have to suffer, you go through that suffering and that makes you stronger. Not so much physically, but in your mind because you know you've gone through these struggles. So if it helps you to know that you've got the lightest shoe available, um, and, and that's maybe a hyperbole because I don't know if someone else makes a lighter shoe, but according to them, this is the lightest shoe they've ever made. So, uh, okay. So <clears throat> let's take a look at the weights compared to uh, the weight of this shoe compared to the weights of other shoes that I personally own. Okay. So let's do a transition here to my scale. All right. So here is the shoe we were just talking about. This is the Mavic shoe that came out probably 12 years ago and was stupid light at the time. Uh, this is a CD shot, uh, shot two wire. This is, you know, a $550 shoe. This is the Pearl Izumi version or V4. They now have a V5 that I'm waiting for it to come back into stock so I can purchase it and review it. This is a Gar Garnet, not to be confused with the shoe on the end, which is Garneau, but this is Garnet. This is an Italian company. They make all their shoes in-house in Italy. And uh, this is the Fabio Aru special edition Italian national champion shoe. This is another company from Italy. It's called Chrono. And that's a shoe that I've worn a lot over the last four, four years or so. And then lately, this has been my go-to shoe. This is the Garnet shoe. I'm sorry, Garneau shoe. There it is there. This is a French company and Garnet Italian company. So this shoe um, is in the $400 price range. And I think it is a fantastic shoe for the money. So, okay. So let's turn on our scale and let's kind of go through some of these weights so that you can have your curiosity um, satisfied. All right. So here we go. This and they all have cleats on them. I weighed it before I had a cleat on it. It was 185. So here we go. 222. Once again, if I didn't say it earlier, this is a 44.5 shoe. Okay. So 222. This is that Mavic shoe I told you about from 12 years ago with a cleat on it. 237. So, you know, here we are 12 years hence. And this Pearl Izumi shoe is only about 15 to 16 grams lighter. So pretty interesting how advanced the Mavic shoe was at the time. And you could see the same kind of fabric ventilation situation. And then if you look at the sole, same type of thing where you've got a lot of section where there is no uh, carbon sole, but it's just reinforced so that they could use minimal material. All right, so those are the two lightweight champions at the moment. This is the CD shoe, the $550 shoe. And you know, some people love CD shoes. Um, they've never really worked for me. Um, I seem to be between sizes, I think. Um, this ratcheting system just doesn't make any sense to me. This is their highest end shoe. And, um, you know, we can't fault it for being heavy. It's just, it's just the way it is, but it just, I don't know. There are CD fans out there and they just love their shoes and they keep them for 10, 15 years and they're, they're floppy and messy and they look like, you know, bathroom slippers by the time they're, they're ready to buy another pair, but that's what they like. All right. 
Here's the version 5 at 328. This is the Garnet shoe at 368. So, you know, much bigger shoe, I think, for whatever reason. It's just much heavier. This is the Chrono, which I've ridden a lot at 340. And then, as I mentioned before, this is my go to shoe. And I absolutely love this shoe. It's super comfortable, you know, at 330. So just to give you an idea, when I say that this shoe is, is really light, then, you know, 100 or so grams, 130 grams, thereabouts. And what is that? Well, that's, you know, for people in the um, English system, the imperial system, you know, it's a good quarter pound per shoe that's half a pound and keep in mind if you're keeping a 90 cadence while riding and that obviously is um, a lot of revolutions per minute per hour and per day per week you know all that stuff one last thing i wanted to share with you is just before shooting this video i realized wow some of these shoes are pretty dirty so I thought I would clean them up before shooting the video. So basically this is just a brush I got from the 99 cent store. And then some Dawn in my soapy water mix. And I just dropped that. But that's all you really need. I mean, your shoes shouldn't get that dirty, but uh, just some Dawn dishwashing liquid a fingernail brush, as, as sometimes this is called. And that's all you need. Just scrub your shoes. I did this without any running water. I just sprayed the uh, Dawn on there. And I then just uh, scrubbed it with the brush and then squirted it with a spritzer water bottle, wiped them down with a rag, and that was it. Many of these shoes have seen thousands upon thousands of thousands of miles and elevation gain so yeah just take a look at my strava and uh, follow me on all the other social media platforms so that uh, you can see kind of what else we do here at the shop that i don't actually post a video for okay well that's all for today i just wanted to give you my feedback after two rides and you know my rides are fairly long six plus hours um, today was uh, another four, five hour ride. I can't remember. I think it was about four hours and then six hours on Saturday. So, you know, 10 hours of riding on two rides. I think that's a fair indication for me. I'm one of these people I know right away. Same thing with the bike. As soon as I take a few pedal strokes out of the parking lot, I know what's going on with the bike instantly. Uh, tire, tire choice, tire pressure, uh, bottom bracket stiffness, all that stuff. So I don't need to ride the shoe for months and months to give you a review. But those two rides are a very good indication of how um, how the shoe performed. Many of the climbs in this area are 15, 20, 25% grades. So um, I get a good feeling of how a shoe fits and, and, and supports my feet when I do steep grades. And, and of course, I'd, I also said I did some sprinting as well. So, okay, well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. We're up to 313 subscribers and I'm just, I'm over the moon up about that. But I want to be able to, I mean, all of these shoes here, I've purchased myself. So I'd like to have uh, somebody send me something to review for you um, so that you can get an unbiased opinion of something that, okay, this is some, this is someone who has, you know, four five, six, eight pairs of shoes and has demoed this pair and he likes it, doesn't like it. Like I said, I'm, I'm fair and I'm balanced. When I said earlier, I'm just not a big fan of CD shoes. I sell them. I, you know, when customers ask for them, I of course say, okay what model, what size, but if someone were to ask me, okay, 
I'm looking for a pair of shoes, what do you recommend? Typically CD is not going to be my first choice. I just haven't really ever uh, loved them and I've had them several times through the years, but okay. Anyway, that's all. And uh, sorry for rambling on, but please like, subscribe, and uh, we will see you up the road.